This is part three of chapter six, viscous flow in ducts and pipes. So the acknowledgement slide as usual. So I'm not gonna go over it again. Well, in the previous slides, we developed equations for head loss in laminar flow. So in laminar flow, because of the simplicity of the flow, we can go ahead and drive some equations and uh, in order to find the friction loss, the head loss in the, in the pipe. So if you remember in the previous slides, this is what we actually did. So we started with the section of a pipe. We tilted it, you know, to also generate a, an elevation but that was actually not necessary. So this can be the same equations could be derived using the horizontal pipe. So for this pipe, we wrote the energy equation between section one here, beginning of the pipe and section two downstream of the pump, uh, of the pipe. And then we consider a control volume uh, containing all of the liquids of, of the pipe. So this P1, for instance, is a high a pressure which is higher than P2. This could be the pressure at the exit of a pump, for instance. So when we wrote, when we write the energy equation, so on the left side and then right side, and then there is some head loss due to uh, uh, friction and so on. So, and we also said that this head loss empirically has been shown to be proportional to a friction factor F L over D length of the pi over diameter and V square over 2G. Then we showed that this HF is related to the velocity and also geometry of the pipe and properties of the fluid and also in terms of the volume flow rate instead of velocity, if you wish. And we also show that this F, this H laminar, this, sorry, this F laminar, this F, the friction factor that we have here for a laminar flow is also equal to 64 divided by Reynolds number. So it means that in order to find HF, how, how to find HF for a laminar flow. We have two options. So first is to directly find HF using this equation here. HF is needed in the energy equation to find, for instance, other unknowns such as like whatever we do have there. So that's one option to directly find HF. The second option or the second approach is to use the Darcy Weisbach equation. This equation HF equal to FL over DV square over 2G. But for in order to be able to use this equation, we do need to know the value for F, the friction factor. How to find it? Friction factor for a laminar flow is equal to 64 divided by the Reynolds number. Then we find it and then come back to the darcy Weisberg equation, plug in in order to find the head loss in a laminar flow. All right, so that was the method and approach for finding the friction factor in a laminar flow. But how about a turbulent flow? So in a turbulent flow, there is no simple and you know easy equation for the velocity profile in the pipe. The velocity profile changes as, for instance, the Reynolds number changes. Therefore, we cannot develop equations that we develop for a laminar flow. However, we still know that the friction factor in a pipe is a function of Reynolds number and also a function of the roughness ratios epsilon over d. Uh, so some steps are needed in order to get to this point, but I'm going to skip the, the, those steps. They are given in the PDF of the 
uh, of this chapter uh, available on the course website turbulence modeling so the result of the turbulence modeling combined with some equations some experiments result in this correlation here which is called the Colebrooks Colebrooks uh, correlation it was developed in 1939 based on uh, many experiments and turbulence modeling and it gives an equation for the friction factor Darcy friction factor F so on the left side you see you do have a square root of the friction factor on the right side we have log log 10 of this term here uh, in this term we do have the reference ratio epsilon over d we do have Reynolds number but again the friction factor appears here so this makes uh, working with this equation a little bit hard and the reason is that friction factor is present on both sides so in order to find the friction factor for given epsilon over d and Reynolds number a kind of iterative uh, procedure is needed which is not difficult you know with the current uh, calculators or using excel sheet so this to make it easier this correlation was converted to a chart which is called the moody chart or moody diagram what you see on the right side in this diagram basically with known epsilon over d and known Reynolds number we can go ahead and read the friction factor so this diagram is a little bit small on this slide so I will talk about it on the next slide instead of using the Moody chart we can follow another approach and that approach is to use the Holland correlation so Holland in 1983 uh, see mathematically uh, pro, you know came up with a, an, another correlation which is equivalent to Colebrook equation however it is explicit in F so it means that F is only on the left side and if we know the Reynolds number uh, epsilon over D we can directly calculate the friction factor without having to do iteration so the error between the Colebrook equation and the Holland equation is negligible so for therefore if you want to use if you want to find the Darcy friction friction factor F you have two options one is to use the Holland equation and the other approach is to use the Moody chart so Moody chart is visual you need to find Reynolds number and epsilon over d and then go use the chart and then estimate the friction factor Holland equation is more accurate because you don't have to do it visually so it's an equation it gives you a better estimate so this is the Moody chart again uh, magnified here on the y-axis shows f the Darcy friction factor f which is equal to h divided by l over dv square over 2g so, so from here you see that once f is known you can go ahead and find h this h is hf from Darcy Weisbach equation so how to find f so first of all for laminar flow you see that oh it, it does have uh, it does give it does provide values of f for laminar flow as well so for laminar flow simply f is equal to 64 divided by Reynolds number this is a log 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 uh, type of chart therefore uh, log of f if you so friction factor for laminar flow is 64 divided by Reynolds number so if you take log of both sides then it will be converted to a line so as a result 64 over Reynolds number in a log log a Cartesian coordinate system looks like a line so we can go ahead and use this line so how to use it 
we need to first calculate Reynolds number. Reynolds number rho VD divided by mu or VD over nu. So once Reynolds number is known, and if it is less than about 2300, so you see that this line hasn't been extended uh, indefinitely. So it is extended only to about like 2300. So if Reynolds is less than this, we can use Moody chart. And for instance, for Reynolds 10 to the 3, 1000, we can find the F on this. So it is close to 0 0.06. But of course, it's easier, it's much more accurate to just find it, you know, algebraically, f is equal to 64 divided by Reynolds number. So for laminar flow, we even didn't have a problem. The problem is was for the turbulent flow and Kohlberg equation. And here for Kohlberg equation, we mentioned that F, the friction factor, is a function of Reynolds number and also the roughness. So how to take the into account the value of the roughness? Roughness is shown on the second y-axis. So the roughness ratio, epsilon over d. So it is. it starts from very small numbers that you see here. It even does have a tube which is a smooth. So for a smooth pipes so you see here for smooth pipes you could use uh, the this curve here the, the lowest curve here is good for all smooth pipes in the turbulent region so it means that epsilon over d equal to zero that's for smooth uh, pipes for any other pipe with a roughness we First calculate the roughness, let's say the roughness is 0 0.05, it is very rough, so up here. So you see that the, it does have its own curve, it levels off, of, of course, at large Reynolds numbers. At large Reynolds numbers, all of these curves level off, become like a line, because at large Reynolds numbers, uh, the friction factor is not a function of Reynolds number anymore. It is only a function of the roughness. So let's say we want to find F for a roughness of 0 0.05 and the Reynolds number, let's say, is 2 times 10 to the 5. So this is this line. We just look at the chart and see that and this is the intersection with that roughness. And then we go ahead and read the friction factor on the y-axis. Of course, we need to be uh, as articulate as possible. So the friction factor for this case would be something between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, so like 0 0.75. Okay, so what else? So as I mentioned, for large Reynolds numbers, uh, the friction factor becomes independent of Reynolds number, and that's what you see this curve, the upper curve here, which says complete turbulence, rough pipes. So it means that if the Reynolds number is larger than a threshold, and that threshold depends on the value of the roughness as well, then F becomes independent of Reynolds number and becomes only dependent on roughness. So meaning that we should use the right curve or the right line that you see uh, here. So there are many of these lines associated with each given roughness. Okay, so as I said in the exam, you have two options. Either to use the Kohlberg or Holland equation. Holland equation, of course, is easier to use to find the friction factor, or you could use uh, the Moody chart. The Moody chart is, of course, faster because you calculate Reynolds number and uh, epsilon over D, just come use the chart. So look up, so look at your Reynolds number, you see where you are on the chart, and then draw a vertical line 
until it, it uh, crosses the curve of the given roughness and then from there you draw a horizontal line in order to intersect the y-axis and in order to find the friction factor f. So there is some error associated with using the Moody chart but it's a faster process and uh, because the, these processes are there are some inherent error associated with the process anyway so using Moody diagram may be justified for most engineering applications. And again, don't forget that these axes are log axes. So for instance, the, the, the x axis, so it's for instance uh, 10 to the 5, and then 2 times 10 to the 5, 3 times 10 to the 5, 8 times 10 to the 5, 9 times n to the 5, 9 times, sorry, uh, 10 to the 5, and then 10 to the 6. So you need to be careful how to use a log uh, diagram. So this, these are not equally spaced. So these are not equally spaced because it's a log diagram. All right, so now how to find friction head loss in a pipe flow? Just a, just a summary, you know, what's the approach? Calculate Reynolds number. Calculate the ratio of the pipe roughness to the pipe diameter, epsilon over D. Then you have two options. Using the Holland correlation, which is explicit, or Moody chart, previous slide find the friction factor f then the head loss due to friction is found by darcy or darcy weisbach equation write and then finally write the energy equation to find pressure drop in the seg in the particular segment of the pipe so from this so the reason that we actually want to find hf because we do need it in the energy equation. In the previous chapters, we used the energy equation, but we assumed that HF, the head loss, was known. So the head loss was given. But in engineering problems, head loss is never given. Nothing is never given, so you need to go ahead and find everything. So that's the way to find or estimate the head loss, HF in the pipe flow. So well, basically what we talked about so far was for a pipe or for a round pipe or for a like a tube or pipe with circular cross-sectional area. But you may ask that how about a duct with a rectangular or squared cross-sectional area? So the answer is that obtaining analytical uh, equations for you know non-circular pipes and ducts is not easy, but there is a very good approximate method, and that's based on the hydraulic diameter approach. So how does it work? So if, for instance, you want to find the friction loss and head loss in a non-circular duct, you just map it to a circular duct. And it's been shown that when you basically transform like a non-circular to a circular, for that you do need an equivalent radius or diameter. That equivalent radius or diameter for a circular duct is called dh. That's the hydraulic diameter, dh. How to find it? It's been shown that if we, if we use this equation, we get the most accurate numbers for the friction factor and also the head loss. So dH of any non-circular duct is equal to 4 times the area, the area of the duct, 4 times the area divided by the wetted perimeter of the duct or pipe. 
weighted perimeter means that if for instance the uh, if we so for instance the, the only the perimeter which is in contact with the fluid so the wetted perimeter so if if it's half or is partial if the duct or pipe is partially uh, filled by the liquid or by the gas the wetted perimeter then would be uh, just the, the area or the perimeter of the pipe which is in contact with the fluid and the reason is that the other parts do not generate so like the parts which are not in contact with the fluid they do not generate they do not create any friction or they do not contribute in the head loss that's why only the wetted perimeter has to be uh, considered <clears throat> all right so as an example if you have a duct non-circular but tra tra rectangular duct with a height of h and width of w the area is equal to wh and the wetted perimeter is 2w plus 2h and then we can go ahead and find the equivalent diameter or the hydraulic diameter so once you find the hydraulic diameter then we can find the Reynolds number in terms of the hydraulic diameter so Reynolds then the Reynolds number that we that we found for instance that we find for a like a uh, we find based on the diameter of the pipe now it becomes based on dh the hydraulic diameter so everything else then once you find the Reynolds number you can go ahead and also find epsilon over dh and then you can use either Holland's equation or the Moody chart so let's do a couple of examples here so we have two reservoirs this is a problem 674 of the book two reservoirs which differ in surface elevation by 40 meters are connected by a new commercial steel pipe of diameter 8 centimeter <clears throat> so there are usually tables for the roughness of different types of commercial pipes so when we say commercial steel pipe then we can use tables in order to find epsilon or epsilon is given in the problem if the desired weight loss if the desired weight flow rate is 200 newton per second of water at 20 degrees C at 20 degrees C the properties of water are known what is the proper length of the pipe neglect minor losses so we will talk about minor losses in the next lecture so here only the losses are because of the the tube itself so sometimes the tube is bent sometimes there are couplings sometimes there are there is a valve you know in the pipe and so on that causes additional losses but for now we do not consider any loss it's just the loss is just because of the pipe itself okay so at 20 degrees C the uh, density and viscosity of water are given for commercial steel either we use tables of the book or epsilon is given the roughness the roughness is 0 0.046 millimeters so this is like 46 micrometers so it's pretty small but it is there is some roughness right so then the epsilon the ratio of epsilon over d can be found which is 0. 000575 so we do need epsilon over d and we do need Reynolds number as well so in order to find the Reynolds number so Reynolds is rho vd over mu so for this case the diameter is known rho mu but v is not known so we need to find we need to go ahead and find the v the velocity 
how to find the velocity, we do have the, the flow rate. We do know the flow rate, the weight flow rate, 200 Newton per second. So this is a kind of different from regular flow rate. This is weight flow rate. So because flow rate is the unit of flow rate is cubic meter per second. Now here is Newton per second. So it means that it is actually mass flow rate and the mass has been multiplied by G as well. So in order to find Q here in the numerator of V, V is equal to Q divided by the cross-sectional area, right? But then this weight flow rate has to be divided by rho G to convert it to Q. And then W dot over rho G will have unit of cubic meter per second. So the velocity is 4.06 meter per second. We go ahead and find Reynolds number, 324,000. It's, it's a turbulent flow. So now we can go ahead and use Colebrook, Holland, or Moody chart. The most accurate is, of course, Colebrook, but it does need iteration. So if you use this equation, 1 over square root of f, you plug in epsilon over d, plug in Reynolds number, and use your calculator. You know, nowadays most calculators can do kind of this kind of iteration and in order to find f. So if you try Holland equation, which is a straightforward, you see f is very close to the number that you have got here. And if you use Moody chart, it is really difficult to read zero all of these significant digits. If you use Moody chart, you may just be able to show, say that okay, f is equal to 0.012. So it's it's much better to use the Holland uh, equation for this purpose. So if you want to use Moody chart and is for f you rise 0.01, it's not acceptable. But if you rise 0.02, it's close enough. If you rise 0.03, is wrong. So of course, if you use Moody chart, you need to be careful that your number is close to the to the actual number, not just throwing you know any number which is not even close to the actual number. All right. So then we find the pipe length from the energy equation. So usually in this equation, in this problems, the last part is to use the energy equation. So in this case, the elevation of the two reservoirs differs by 40 meters. And this 40 meters actually compensates for the head loss or the friction loss. So this is again, if you write the full energy equation, P over gamma plus V square over 2G plus Z1 equal to the same thing on the right side plus HF. So the pressure terms cancel out, velocity terms cancel out because velocities are nearly zero. What remains is only Z1, Z2 and HF. So this is in fact Z1 equal to, so on the left side, all other terms are uh, put equal to zero, so Z1 is equal to Z2, and then plus HF, and HF is found from the darcy Weisbach equation. So this is the darcy Weisbach equation, and Z1 minus Z2 is equal to 40. So in, the, in here, everything is known except for except for the length of the pipe. So therefore the length of the pipe is found, which is equal to 205 meter. So here you see that the velocity here is non-zero. So we should be careful the velocity that we used in the energy equation was the velocity at the surface of the reservoirs. But this velocity V in the Darcy-Weisberg equation 
is the velocity of the fluid in the pipe itself. So it's, these are this velocity is not zero. So these are two different velocities. All right. That was like a basic, very basic, uh, a, a very basic problem in this chapter. How to use basically how to go ahead and find the friction factor and the head loss for a simple problem either using Moody chart or the Kohlberg or Holland's equation. All right, so let's do problem 684. It says that it's desired to deliver 60 cubic meter per hour of water with given rho and viscosity through a horizontal asphalted cast iron pipe. Well, this is a type of treated cast iron pipe. So for this, we can, for this type of pipe, the reference is given. Estimate the pipe diameter, which will cause the pressure drop to be exactly 40 kilopascals per 100 meters of the pipe length. <clears throat> All right. So usually the starting point to do these problems is to write the energy equation. So in this case, we do have a horizontal pipe. So Z's cancel out. There's no elevation change. We do have a pressure drop. So it's within the pipe. It's not on the surface of a reservoir. Therefore, pressures are not atmospheric pressure. So we do have to keep the pressures. However, inside the pipe, from section 1 to section 2, if there is no change in the cross-section, cross-sectional area, so the velocities will remain the same. So they will cancel out from both sides because they are equal. So essentially, the energy equation is simplified to HF equal is equal to delta p over gamma or delta p is equal to gamma times hf so this is what we have delta p is equal to gamma rho g times hf and hf is found from the darcy weisbach equation so rho g multiplied by fl over d v square over 2g uh, it is simplified to this equation. So let's put, let's plug in whatever we have for now to see what will happen. So F is unknown. L is 100 meter of the pipe. We, because the pressure drop is given, delta P is known 40,000 for 100 meter. So let's put L equal to 100 meters. And D is unknown. The diameter we want to find density is known and the velocity is known no but q the flow rate is known the q flow rate is given so velocity is flow rate per cubic meter per second divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe pi d squared over four so we do have another d squared here and 1d over there so we do have d which is unknown friction factor which is unknown and we put it equal to delta p which is 40,400 meters of the pipe so it turns out that 40,000 is equal to this constant f over d to the power of 5 or d to the 5 is equal to this constant times f. So we should not panic when we see this kind of iterative problems. It, it occurs a lot. So we do need to follow an iterative method in order to find f and d. So in order to know f, the friction factor, we do need the Reynolds number. And we do need the roughness ratio. So the roughness ratio is found. Epsilon, the roughness is known. Oh, it's not found. Epsilon is known. And then epsilon over D, it's a function of D again. 
So roughness ratio is not known. And how about Raynor's number? For Raynor's number, again, we do need to know the diameter and velocity where diameter is not known. So Raynor's number rho vd over mu, we can convert it to in terms of q, the flow rate, by using v equal to q divided by area. So v, the velocity is equal to q divided by the area. Sorry, I do not have the right tools. And the area does have, the area is the area of a circle, pi d squared over 4. So in the Reynolds number, we do have unknown d as well, but everything else is known. Okay. Now we can use Excel sheet, for instance, or just, for instance, guess. We can guess a value for uh, F, so this F here is a function of Reynolds number and roughness. But we don't have roughness, we don't have Reynolds number. In both of them, uh, both of them are a function of the diameter. So we do need to do an iterative method. So for instance, as an effective way is usually to guess here in this case, like a value for the, the friction factor, 0.20. If you look at the Moody diagram, you see that you see the range of the friction factor. So 0.02 is a good start point. Even if it's, it shouldn't be too far off, but it should be, you know, in range at least in that diagram and it will convert soon. So if we choose this value for F, then from here we can go ahead and find D to the 5. And once d is fine, the diameter of the pipe is known, we can go ahead and calculate Reynolds number, and we can calculate epsilon over d now. So now with epsilon over d and Reynolds number known, we can go back to the Moody chart or Colbrook or Holland's equation and actually find f. So based on this, we, can, we will get a value for friction factor which is better than value of the initial guess, which is 0 0.02. So if we repeat this two times, usually the value of the actual exact value of F will be found. So in this case, 0 0.0216 and Reynolds number and diameter known. So in the exam, you can do the iteration like at least uh, twice, so meaning the first guess a value for F and then find diameter and then go back and uh, like from here find the, the corrected value for F and then find the diameter again. So at least do it twice so that it shows you know how to how you should approach the problem. If you do it like more than twice, then the more you do, the, the closer you get to the answer. I hope that it's clear the procedure. So you would need to do it by yourself. You know, go to the Moody diagram, do it multiple times, you will get a sense of how it works. It's quite straightforward. So another problem here, the last problem that we're going to do in this lecture, a commercial steel annulus, 12 meter long. So the cross section, I have given you the cross section of this annulus here, with A equal to 2 centimeters and B equal to 1 centimeter. So this A and Bs are the radius, radii of the inner radii and outer radii of the annulus. So in other words, D2 is equal to 2A, D1 is equal to 2B. So the annulus connects two reservoirs which differ in surface height by 5 meters. Compute the flow rate 
through the annulus if the fluid is water and 20 degrees C with given density and viscosity. And for commercial steel, take epsilon equal to this value. So in the exam, this epsilon will be given to save you time, or you can go ahead and find it in the tables, but I'll give it in the exams. So, comp so all right, so in order to do this problem, first of all, we need to compute the hydraulic diameter. Hydraulic diameter is 4A over P, so it is equal to 2A minus B. If you want to see the details, this is D2 to A, D1 to B. Hydraulic diameter is 4 times the area divided by the perimeter. So the area is pi A squared minus B squared. And the perimeter is the perimeter of the inner circle and outer circle, the wetted area. So it's 2 pi A plus 2 pi B. It is simplified to hydraulic diameter equal to 2A minus B. So therefore, we do have the hydraulic diameter here. If we write the energy equation between the two reservoirs, so that's at the surfaces of the reservoirs, the velocities are zero. And on the surface, the pressures are atmospheric pressure equal. They cancel out from both sides. It turns out that HF, the head loss, is equal to delta Z. So the head loss is compensated by delta Z. So HF is equal to delta Z, which is 5. And HF from the Darcy Weisberg equation is equal to F L over D. In this case, is the H, hydraulic diameter, V squared over 2G. So F is unknown, L is known, 12 meter long, over DH, V squared, unknown, over 2G. So we get this relationship between F and velocity squared. So it seems that we do need iteration again. So if we find epsilon over dh, epsilon and dh both are known, so epsilon over d is known. But Reynolds number is not known because for Reynolds number we do need the velocity beforehand. So again, we go ahead and make a guess, educated guess, again 0 0.2, close to 0 0.02, in this case 0 0.23. This is, you know, an example to make the conversion faster. So with this guess, with this guess here, we can actually go ahead and find the velocity from this equation. So the velocity is found, and then we can calculate the Reynolds number, which is an approximation for now. So now we do have the Reynolds number, and we already had epsilon over d, we can go ahead and actually find the value of f from the Holland's equation or from the Moody chart. So then we will get a value for the friction factor, which is better than the initial guess. It's because it's close. We can tell that it's closer to the answer. And then once we find this f better, we go ahead and calculate the, the velocity better from this equation here. And then we can redo the Reynolds number. Then we get a better number for the Reynolds number. So you see the differences between the velocities. Based on the initial guess, it is 2.67. And based on one iteration, it's 2.46. So we are already not, I mean, we are already closed. If we do it one more time, the velocity becomes 2.45. So we are now, we can tell that we are pretty much close to the final correct answer. So we can stop here because there is not much change between 2.46 and 2.45. Now that velocity is known, we can compute the flow rate. 
Q is equal to velocity times area of the annulus, pi a squared minus b squared, the, the, the inner area of the annulus where the flow actually passes. It is found and it has to be, we need to make sure that the units are also fine. Fine. All right, so this brings us to the end of this lecture. And uh, we will have another lecture on this chapter, chapter 6, which will come shortly. Thank you for your attention.